In this video, we're going to take a look at flow control mechanism that exists in C and take a look at possible ways uh, we can implement the, those are implemented in assembly language. Um, in each case, we probably would have multiple ways of doing it, but um, we will take an uh, example and uh, show kind of how you would write the equivalency. One of, one of the um, first flow controls uh, that we're going to look at is uh, basically the call return flow control. So if, if I'm in C, if you're in C language, um, you would have a call, a function call, let's say, mm, uh, f f example function, just lack of better term, we'll just call example function. And um, to call an example function, let's, let's keep it simple and not have a parameter passed. Um, so if I call a, uh, uh, if I want to call a function, I just write the name of the function parentheses open close. That's how we call it. If I want to write the function, I would basically would say example function. And uh, if there was a parameter, we would pass the parameters here, bracket open bracket close and this would be the function body code whatever whatever we want to we want this function to do will all go right here uh, how do we do that in uh, assembly so in assembly as, in, as, as far as and I'm going to focus uh, the assembly on pick micro in this case of course that's our focus and what would that look like well in pick micro if I want to call the function I have to explicitly say call so you have to add that word call and then the name of the function and we're going to use the same name example function and that's that's all you need to do to make the call how do I write the function well the function the way you write it you start by uh, uh, um, example function the name that we gave this this function you put a colon and then that would be basically the start. It's equivalent to x function, parenthesis, open parenthesis, close bracket. And then you would put whatever function you, whatever thing you want this function to do right here. And then at the end, there's no close bracket or open bracket. At the end, you would do return, uh, which uh, performs the close bracket option. So what it does, the call will call this function, which basically all it is, is gonna jump over here plus is going to push on the stack where it should come back and when it hits a return it returns back uh, there are some variation on so uh, on call uh, and return we have relative return relative calls and a few other one but that's kind of the main one that deals with function calls and function returns so what's next um, so the next uh, uh, flow control that we commonly use uh, it's going to be if then else so a, a typical of course there are many variation but a typical of if then else would be if some condition then i'm going to just pick a simple condition so we don't spend a lot of time thinking about the condition let's let's use y is if i is um, not equal to zero okay um, then um, then uh, what are we going to do? Uh, if uh, if i is not equal to zero, we may want to do something. Well, before I go forward, I probably should not use, this is not a valid symbol. So let's go ahead and use the valid symbol for not equal. So if i is not equal to zero, let's say there's a body for doing when it's the condition is true. And... Um, and then uh, if uh, and then we'll have an else and we'll do the body when the condition is false here okay so so this would be the c code as, as it is how would we implement this using assembly before i do that i, I wanted to just take a minute and go through and show you a whole bunch of these 
the, there's, there's a whole group of uh, instructions here that are very useful. These are all the functions that skip the next uh, command based next uh, assembly uh, instruction, whether the condition is true or false. So those are really kind of a useful, um, uh, useful ones for building any kind of a condition. We're going to talk about them in the context of if then else, but of course that could be used for other things too. If you're looking at a single bed and you're trying to make decision, this would be good, good instructions to use there. Uh, they test the bed and they skip whether it's clear or set. And of course, uh, all of these branches are wonderful tools uh, for implementing um, various kinds of uh, if then else, if you if then else, while loops, uh, for loops, and all of those. Um, so that, that's I think that's that's bulk of what is available to us to to perform these kinds of uh, flow controls. So uh, if, uh, let's 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 take a crack at doing that. So let's say I we have defined I to be location eight zero or whatever. Um, so as far as the variable and let's let's assume just just for simplicity, let's assume we have defined I to be a character. So we don't we don't have to do that. So I'm gonna have to come here in the assembly side and say okay. Let's go ahead and define i to be location 0x0. Zero zero. So data memory, so I'm just basically giving it a space. And then I want to say if i is true, then if i is not equal to 0, do these things. Then what I can go is go over here and take a look at these things and say, well, is there anything I can do uh, to figure out if it's 0 or not? Well. Uh, there are many of these you can you can use. Um, one would be uh, kind of the branch zero potentially would be a good one um, to use. There is uh, if if there is a or for example or instruction. This is an inclusive or with W register and it sets the zero bit. So that probably is the easiest one to do. So I can come here and say okay clear. F W register. So I'm going to clear W register. Then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, go ahead and do an OR of um, this register I have and uh, W register. And then, uh, so the register I have is I, and I want to put the result back in W register. So if this, if this operation ends up giving you a zero, then the zero flag is set. So so if it's so so if the uh, if the zero flag is set, that means this i is equal to zero, and you want to do um, the um, the non uh, the, do the uh, false statement. So what you can do, you can say, okay, if that is true, branch on zero to to false, false label, okay, and then uh, somewhere down here we could have a false label, and here is where we do the body false, whatever whatever we want to do when it's false, so so if they do it. And it's zero, then you're going to jump here. If it's not zero, you're not going to jump, and you're going to do the next instruction, which I'll, I don't have to label it, but it would be probably for clarity. I'll label it. This is the true stuff. So this is going to be where the true stuff happens. We're going to do a body true, and then we got to make sure, uh, you know, we we have a label end if. For the false case, you just fall in here, but in here you have to put a branch um, to end if, okay, which is down here, end if. So that's one way of doing it. So it comes through, it ors the data if it's zero, which means it's a false, jumps to the false side. If it's true, gets that done, and then out it goes. 
So here is an example of how if then else does. That's one more, one of our uh, tools that are available. So um, another one uh, we can kind of take a look at uh, is one of the simplest loops we can write. So now we know how to decide to do one thing or another thing with if then else. What if we wanted to do a loop? One of the simplest loop would be while loop. And whatever the condition is going here, and then body of while goes in here. Whatever it is that we want to do in this loop goes in here, and end of the while is indicated by bracket. So that's a C version. What would the assembly version of this look like? Let's just just to make it a little easier to follow. Let's put something simple, some con simple condition. So let's say we want to do as long as i is less than zero. And once again, just just so we don't have to have multiple bytes to work with, let's kind of assume that i is a character um, defined as a character. Okay. All right. So how do we take this this assembly language? Is so we're gonna loop until it's i is as as, as long as i is less than ten. So so simply what we could do is uh, use this is this is kind of this would be a good time uh, to use this CPF less than. Uh, so let's see how that can be used. All right. So we'll come in. Of course, you're gonna have. We have to define the variables uh, for the declaration. So define i, and we're gonna say that's location 80, just because there's a first location available to us. So the assembly code from that would be we're gonna have we have to put a label which is gonna be the while loop label, and then what we can do is do whatever the body. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so if we're gonna, if we're gonna do this, we the very first condition, the very first thing we have to do in this loop, we have to test this condition. So, the simplest thing would be move L W ten, so uh, per decimal ten. So we're gonna move that into W register. Then we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of this particular instruction for this case. So you gotta kind of go through this to see which one works what best for you. So we're going to do CPF, CPF skip less than I. So if it's I is less than 10, it's going to skip. Okay, so so it's going to skip the next instruction. So if it's not, it's not. So so if, if, if the instruction here should really be branch done or W. Just to be specific, branch W done. And then this would be uh, kind of down here would be W done. And that's the end of the loop. So so what happens, it comes in here. If I is less, if his I is less than this, then it's going to skip and start executing something after here, which would be we we'll put the body of the while loop, whatever we need to do in the while loop right here. And then at the end of this, we'll do a branch to while loop. Okay. So if it's not, then we break the loop and jump out here. If, if it's less than, then we continue to rotate through it here and take care of it. So here's a, here's a while loop. Uh, there are multiple variation of while loop. We're not going to spend time kind of covering all of the possibilities, but let's go ahead and do one more special loop and that special loop is basically the the um, the for loop so in C uh, for loops are kind of useful and actually they're becoming even more useful as we are getting into the object oriented world and we can actually count objects but now let's stick with the basic C for loop and see if we can do a conversion of that. So let's say you have a simple, um, once again, we'll assume that character I is the what we're using. And let's say you know, there, there's a for loop that we are trying to implement and this for loop is gonna be I equal to zero and it's gonna do it as long as I is less than 250 and then I is gonna be incremented, okay? And then there is a body of 
for loop that we need to get a get done and then that's the end of the loop so now the question is how we're going to implement this using that and once again we can use all those that we blocked off you know all the skips here all the bit tests here and all the branches in here so uh, skips are really useful anytime uh, you are comparing things um, so so in this case a couple of things we have to remember for loop has an initialization um, uh, and uh, compare and then some action okay right. and we have to be cognizant that if this only happens once in the loop so so we're gonna go ahead and de define this is kind of basically like what we've been doing before define i to be location 80 that's where the variable is kept and then you want to make sure you start by clearing f at least that's what it says clear f um, i so i is clear so i is zero so they did the first function and then the loop starts okay so so we did the initial condition now we got to test the condition and if the condition is true we're going to do the body of the code uh, so we need to have a label let's let's call this one um, uh, a for loop that's the label name and then at this point we do the condition before we do the next rest of the loop so uh, this one would look like probably the best thing would be to do the same thing as we did before move lw 250 so 250 goes to w register then we're gonna compare f skip less than and uh, that i so i is if i is less than we're gonna skip if it's not we're gonna so so at this point we say okay if it's no longer less than 250 why don't you branch to for loop being done and then if it's still less than that then go ahead and do the body of the for loop once you finish with body of the for loop then you're going to do whatever the action is that needs to take place and in this particular case we have to increment f i that's the instruction they want us to that's that's the activity we have to do after the loop and then we branch back to for loop and then we got to make sure we have a label f done so because we used it up there so so this is this is a simple for loop that we are implementing here you define i that would be the declaration of the variable here we are clearing f which is this clearing i and then we're going to compare i and 250 if it's less than we're going to do the body of the code and we're going to increment that and restart the process if it's not we jump to f done and that's the end of that okay so although there are many many other constructs you can kind of see most of them gonna be a variation of what we have talked about here we've talked about for loop while loop for loop is a special case of while loop and then if then else and the function call um, or the construct the main construct we use for flow control in c okay and then we also kind of highlighted a little bit and I'm, maybe I'll use a red now that we're done with this table this set of commands would be greatly useful in making, this, making decisions about what to do and what not to do this is another group here that tests would be great and these branches are also really good um, not, not the call but the branches are really good ways of deciding whether you want to do one thing or another thing and control the flow of the program.